Hey folks, welcome back here to my channel Whiskey Visma. My name is Christopher and today I brought with me here an Edredauer. Yeah? Um, and well, you could say independently bottled, but as many of you know, Edredauer is owned um, by the same, or it's uh, basically the same company as Signatory Vintage, um, owned, by, owned and run by Andrew Symington. Um, the distillery itself is located in uh, Pitlochy, so very picturesque town. Should definitely visit it when you are in uh, Scotland. And uh, for the longest time, was also considered the smallest distillery in Scotland. Now, of course, in recent years, so many new distilleries uh, were opened that, um, yeah, the this title uh, is not really. Um, True anymore, there are much smaller distilleries nowadays, but nonetheless, it's one of the smallest, uh, still. So, what about this Edredauer? It's uh, one of many recently, or in recent years, released Edredauers, all 9, 10, 11 years old, all heavily sherried. So this is, well, deep mahogany color, so sherry bomb, you could say. And um, yeah, this part of the Anshul filtered collection bottled with you know, with 46%, of course, Anshul filtered, no color and added. And uh, yeah, this is really one of many very affordable cherry bombs released by Adrian Dauer and Signatory Vintage in the last eight, nine years, as far as I remember back. So this one in particular it comes from cask number 49 um, and was distilled 4th of March 2009, bottled 26th of July 2019. So squarely uh, 10 years old, 10 years of age um, and yeah, as I said, heavily sherried. There were a number of these in recent um, months really. They were all pretty similar in color um, as far as I've read, not in taste and aroma though, there are stark differences. Uh, this is the only one I could get my hands on and the only one I was able to track down and buy, but just yesterday I saw this new one uh, released, similar color, same same um, yeah, basic, or, you know, same date um, or dates of distillation and bottling all 2009 until 2019 um, also 46% similar cask maturation so as I said uh, lots of these around and I always wonder how Andrew Dower and Andrew Simon is doing this I mean um, imagine a new Glendronach 10 years of age comes out on, on core range of course with a color like this, it would have been already very, very expensive. Um, I mean, the old revivals back in 2014, 13, for sometimes 40 euros when they were on sale was basically completely underselling the quality of those whiskies. But um, nowadays, uh, you would probably um, pay upwards, um, at least double, at least. Um, might get a few more percentage uh, percentages of ABV out of it, um, but hey, uh, the comparison still stands. I believe um, if it's some high, yeah, distillery with a higher profile, then a color like this would definitely cost you a premium. But is it any good? Is the question. Now, there were a few commentators on YouTube, um, German ones that I've seen, so vlogs that were not at all that impressed with this particular bottling. There were different ones um, that were released in the same, at the same time, a little earlier, sometimes a little later, that fared better in their eyes. Um, I personally, as I said, could only get my hands on this one um, and uh, we'll see how, how I liked. Okay, um, yeah, so on the nose. Very deep, very brooding, not old, obviously. I mean, 10 years of age um, can only get you so far, even in a very active sherry cask. Um, it is 
full-on raisins, dates and figs of, all, of the dried kind, of course. But at the same time, and this is pretty yeah, reminiscent of very many Edredars that I had in recent times, um, particularly those bottled under Signatory Vintage Unchill Filtered Collection, they have this savory component to it. So I like to compare it to some fig chutney you sometimes are served with your cheese platter. Caramel, perhaps. Some lighter aromas, sweetness arriving. They're definitely there. It's not vanilla, no, not at all. But toffee, yeah. Caramelized sugar, sure. And then some oak. Yeah, the oak is there. Um, I, I'd be worried if it wasn't there, then you could really say that this is just cherry coating. Maybe a liter or two of highly dense sweet PX into the cask and there you have it. But no, oak is there. Coupled with menthol, powdered cocoa, perhaps. Very, very gentle nose, really. The 46% are well integrated as well. Definitely sense the alcohol, it's there. But it's not, it's not weak, it's not too strong, it's, as I said, well integrated. So now on taste. Hmm. Punchy. Not in, not burning, not not biting. It's just very aromatic, full blast of oakiness, a little bit of sweetness at first, but then quickly drying in the back as it goes down to the finish, which is medium long, by the way. So not the first time I savoring of this. But yeah, very well balanced, um, as I said, very aromatic, lots of mildly bitter tannins, some mentholated chocolate, oranges perhaps, but the caramel is there as well, some toffee fudge, um, some... raisin bread so you still sense that this is malt whiskey uh, not just any alcohol with lots of sherry coating not at all so try to defend this one against some of the critique that recent bottlings of these were receiving it's just artificial superficial sherry no I think it's it's decent And it's the second time I try this um, now in this, in this session uh, for the German video I uh, tried it before. And the first time I take a sip, I always get the impression on, my, uh, on the palate of some form of smoky aromas, but not any kind of campfire, bonfire smokiness, so really um, actual smoke, but some form of phenolic component that I associate always with um, red poison, you could smell it, or naphthalene, mothballs, this type of very dry vegetal peatiness. And how do I know what red poison or, um, um, yeah, or mothballs smell like? Well, in the 90s, um, in our apartment building, we had some problem with, with, you know, with rats at one point, and so of course someone came. Um, ex exterminators, are they called exterminators? I think so. A pretty badass name for a profession. 
Um, and they then uh, laid out those, um, yeah, those traps. And when they are very fresh, then you could always smell sort of some form of, this is in the naphthalene. And for mothballs as well, you know, that you put in your, or that you used to put in your closet to ward against moths who like to munch on your uh, fabrics. And this is what I get the first time I take a sip from this Edra Dawa. So very odd. And I had this before in heavily sherry Bona Heavens, for instance that came from wine casks and also from a Lafroig at one point. So usually something I associate with smoky, peaty whiskey. And um, I don't know what, how this gets into this. Maybe the cask, maybe they didn't clean their equipment after Balechin batch um, all that well, I don't know. But it's quite interesting. But none to be found on the nose, not, no smoke whatsoever. This is absolutely unpeated. Mm -hmm. As I said, medium long finish. Goes down, the tenants are always there, but not in a in a drying, in a, or in a way that it's too drying, too bitter. It's sort of a, when you, I always like to compare it to ch chocolate types, so the cocoa content. So 50 to 55% cocoa, not quite mellow milk chocolate, a little higher, but then some salty um, aromas as well, salted caramel perhaps. And hmm, yeah, cherries, mon cherie. Any of you know it's this um, this type of sweet. So the um, alcohol infused cherry and this um, liquidy chocolate coating, uh, chocolate body. That's what we call here mon cherie. You can only get it uh, in winter time, autumn and winter. It goes down without the excess of sugary sweetness. This is, reminds me of this as well. So yeah, quite nice. Very fond of this. Um, and for a little over 50 euros, can't do no wrong these days, sadly. 50 euros, still lots of money. Um, gets me through the week when it comes to groceries and food. But um, then again, this whiskey will last me much longer than just a week. So. What would I mark this? I prepared something new. Um, it was always a hassle to, for me at least, to um, cut the video, then to add uh, when I orally um, called out a rating, then to put it somewhere here in the video. And uh, my, my, my PC is not the fastest anymore. So it takes a while to convert a, a high resolution video to um, to a new format than with the added pictures or ratings. So I just said, why not um, try a different approach and just do it here physically with some sort of pop-up. Um, and this is what I did. I mean, we all know Rafi and Rafi does the same, so can't be all that bad. So what would I mark this? Um, I would give this a solid, a very solid 88 out of 100. So it's well on its way to um, the the excellent 90 points. Um, it's missing a little bit of fruitiness and complexity on the palate, as many of the younger sherry whiskies tend to do. And um, nevertheless, for me, rather flawless, very enjoyable, juicy, savory, some sweetness, but not too much. Oak is there and good strength, so gets you quite away. Um, yeah, I liked it. Um, but let me know what you think. Have you had similar Edra Dowers, um, either heavily sherried or refill or whatever? Um, and what's your take on Edra Dower in general? How do you like signatory vintage bottlings? Let me know in the comments. Um, and then I hope you have a nice week and I'll see you again then next time. Bye bye.